Dear President Dole, um, dear Prime Minister Plenkovic, dear Angela and Ursula and Donald, uh, dear fellow presidents and prime ministers, members of the EPP and delegates, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, dobrodošli u Zagreb, dobrodošli u Hrvatsku. Welcome to Zagreb, welcome to Croatia. It is a distinct pleasure to be with you tonight. I would like to congratulate the European People's Party and the Croatian Democratic Union for co-organizing and hosting this important Congress. I applaud President Dole, my good friend Joseph, for his leadership in the past years. I'm convinced that my good friend Donald Tusk, Tusk who's yet to be elected, will continue to successfully steer the EPP in the years to come. This seems to be um, the time of many firsts for both Croatia and the EU. This is the first EPP Congress in Croatia. We will be taking over our first presidency in a little bit more than a month. The EU will have a first woman president of the European Commission, and half of the Commission will be women. Last but not least, I am the first female president of the Republic of Croatia, and I am determined to very soon become the first woman who was re-elected the president of Croatia for the second term. And I thank you all for your support and your well-wishing. The EPP is leading by example and providing strong leadership for a Europe we want to live in, for a Europe of confident members with proud national traditions, but interconnected societies that rely on each other and our mutual solidarity. Our European unity is not a weakness, but our strength and the foundation of our society's resilience to face any possible challenges. And our values are what define us most. The EPP is leading by example and providing strong leadership for a Europe that we want to live in once again. And the EU project has transformed our continent where after two of the most devastating wars in history, one of the most su successful projects on our planet was created. We in Croatia, know all too well the cost of fighting against tyranny, aggression, and oppression. What it means to fight for democracy, liberty, and freedom. We have risen from the ashes against all odds and are building today together with you, our European friends and partners, a Europe that benefits us, the hundreds of millions of people across the continent, bringing new opportunities to our citizens. Member states can have and promote their national interests and at the same time remain steady supporters of European togetherness, unity, and a common vision for the future. Croatia is utilizing its geographic position as both a Central European and Mediterranean country to provide part of the solution to some of Europe's most pressing issues. Together with 11 other EU member states, Croatia is pivoting the Three Seas Initiative based on our awareness that the European consolidation from north to south has not been completed. Substantial projects such as energy, supply corridors, the development of transport and digital communications, infrastructure within this initiative will allow for the full integration of Central Europe with the remainder of our continent and erase the artificial but unfor unfortunately still lingering divisions between the so-called West uh, and East of Europe or Old and New Europe. Most of all, it will provide a better life for all of our citizens. European resilience is also defined by its geopolitical surroundings. In this context, we should not forget about Southeast Europe, about our neighborhood, which is vital for Europe's security and stability. 
we cannot concede to just uphold the status quo. We must be aware that when we speak about EU integration, we actually do not speak about enlargement, but the consolidation and reinforcement of the whole of Europe. This consolidation is our common strategic interest. Enlargement or co consolidation must be a course based on merit and on a strict but fair approach. But when an individual country is ready for the next step in the accession process, the EU must also be ready to keep its promises and demonstrate that reform efforts are paying off. If the EU does not act quickly and proves its commitment to the future of our neighborhood of Europe, somebody else will and the European project will not be complete. Southeast Europe is at the axis of today's major global security challenges and has become a staging ground for the flexing of geopolitical muscle and competing interests. Strategic void, a vacuum created by the uncertainty of a Euro-Atlantic future on the one hand and slow pace of the necessary reforms on the other, has been gradually filled by third parties who may not necessarily be benevolent. A better future comes from deed and bold steps forward. It is our common responsibility in a multipolar and challenging world to remain focused and goal-oriented. Finally, let me say, say a few words about principles. Let me remind you of the principles outlined in the Schuman Declaration which are still more than relevant in our discussions on our own future. It underscores the importance of unity in defining goals, fellowship in protecting our values and interests, solidarity in facing hardship, and our responsibility for future generations. I'm convinced that all these points still are and will continue to be the fundamental and lasting part of our common European values. What we need today more than ever is true leadership and vision that is characterized by credibility, consistency, and courage. We need trust in ourselves, in our dem democratic institutions, in our friendships and allies, and in our people. And in all that, uh, I wish to Ursula, to Donald, and to all of you, a lot of success in facing the challenges and using the opportunities that are ahead of us. Life is ever-changing. It offers so many challenges and many opportunities, and we need to embrace them all and make them part of our unique experience. Because to be able to enjoy the privileges of freedom and democracy, you also have to experience downturns, and maybe even how miserable life can be without freedom and security. And Ursula has spoken about it so well. So this is our common responsibility. Let's take of our, uh, care of our future. Let's protect our way of life and the freedom of choice. The opportunities for everyone to lead and to be a leader need to be protected if we are to ensure for the future of Europe that we want to live in. Thank you.